Still on health matters, operatives of the National Dr Agency for Food Drug Administration and Control, NAFDAC, arrested a syndicate that specializes in the production of counterfeit wines, soft drinks, and other consumables in Ezioku Market in Aba Abu State. Now, this was revealed by the Director General of the agency, Professor Mojisola Adeyeyi, in Abuja. She said NAFDA carried out several weeks of intelligence gathering and collation of data on the activities of these merchants of death in collaboration with other security agencies. The NAFDA boss said that the agency carried out the sting operation and the market to bust the criminal operation taking place there. According to her, it is worthy of note that this dastard act has been going on for a long time and that they operate like a cartel, threatening anyone who dares to challenge them. Now, to discuss this further, I am being joined by Global Health and Development Specialist, Bernard Fatoyi. Thank you so much for your time, Bernard. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure being here today. Yeah. Now, this, of course, is a very disturbing trend. How can consumers uh, identify counterfeit products more effectively in the market, especially when they, are, uh, I mean, closely resemble the genuine ones? Uh, I mean, it's it, it's a difficult one because, um, I mean, you saw the clips and um, as you can see, many of people into this, they go to a very, very, they take their trade to a very, very advanced level to try to imitate the original product as much as possible. So um, it's a difficult one. However, um, I guess one of the ways to go about it, um, even according to NAPDAC, is um, they talk about the four P's, if I remember correctly. Yeah, so you talk about the product. Um, so the product, the pricing, the packaging. So you want to be very careful about looking at the packaging, you understand? Um, spending errors, does bottle look shady? Um, do you want to also pay attention to the characteristics of the product itself in terms of the smell? the feel, the, the color, you what pricing is also a good way to go about it in terms of once you once you have an idea that oh this the cost of this product seems to be below what is expected for this product, that is an indication for you. Because usually of course, I mean, and that's one of the reasons why it's a very profitable trade. They trade they always would benchmark their price against the original product, but still yet, there's always that differential that brings it a bit lower because they want to push the product out as much as possible. So those are ways to go about it. But at the end of the day, I think what is what is important is that NAVDAC, NAVDAC and other um, agencies that um, have intersecting um, regulatory function in this area need to do very, 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 um, very, 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 intense work on publicity okay. aside from what uh, what we've seen in terms of um, investigation and, and um, enforcement, we need to do a lot of publicity, in ma making people understand that yes, there's a lot of perfect products in the market, you need to be vigilant and you need to um, you need to collaborate with us so that we can keep on um, enforcing and um, arresting um, these um, organizations. Okay. Now, I, I mean, still staying on consumer awareness, what role do you believe that consumer awareness and also education plays in the fight against counterfeit products? You know, let me give you a typical example. I'm someone who, for instance, uh, likes to try new products, right? So I see a new product on the shelf. I'm like, oh, this, I mean, th this looks good. The price is okay. Let me try it. You know, you might not be, sh uh, you might not be so sure as to whether it's genuine or not. Are there key things you might want to look out for uh, when it comes to maybe the labeling, like you said, uh, government approvals and all of that, that, you know, can sort of give you some sort of thumbs up that you might not just be consuming something that might be, you know, harmful to you. I mean, honestly, let's, I like the fact that you painted, you know, a more realistic situation and let's be, let's be real. Uh, um, there's a limit to the amount, of course, an amount of um, fulfillment we can get with consumer awareness. Because yes, people will try products for the first time. Even it takes a long time for you to be able to create a sort of standard 
um, standard in your head to know how to, st to know that oh, this product, it doesn't seem like the original. Number one, it means that you must have tried the original in the first place and tried it over the and understand that, oh, this is the color, this is the way it tastes, or this is the way the bottle looks for you to understand that this is the standard and then now have that memory to compare. So it, it's, it's not a, only a percentage of custom, uh, consumers were able to do this. So at the end of the day, the box still lies with the regulatory agencies to ensure that to build that trust, um, um, that public trust um, by doing what they should in the first place to ensure that this product does not come to the market, you understand? And uh, I think um, it, it, it's interesting because this, oh, this recent and findings has created a lot of um, public discussion, but I think it's, it, 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 it's a proxy uh, indication for us to also understand um, how much regulatory gap exists um, within the food drug administration's administrative space, you understand? Uh, last time I was on this show, we we're talking about the increased cost of um, drugs. And I remember one of the things or one of the solutions that we talked about and we also talked about was, you know, let's more and more, you know, we should switch to um, cheaper generics and locally okay. made um, drugs, you understand, to um, take the place of the um, um, original, um, I mean, the pit, the original patents, you okay. understand, like GSK, because we're talking about GSK even and all that. And I mentioned that the, right. the problem is... Yeah, all right, Bennett. I, I'm sorry, I might just need to cut in here because you pressed for time. But uh, sincerely, right. we appreciate uh, your, uh, of course, our contribution on the news tonight. Bennett Fatoye, Global Health and Development Specialist. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. Thank you for having me.